the important spiritual manual for all the living beings in this world for attaining perfection in their life. In 15.7, uh, Lord Krishna is giving most important information about our identity and our belonging. Mamai vam sho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatanaha manashashtani indriyani prakriti sthani karshati Hey Arjun, all the living beings moving here and there in this world in 8.4 million species, you see, he says they all are my part and parcel. They are mine, they belong to me. Mama Yeva Amsho, Yeva means certainly. They are not part of India. They are not part of the earth. They don't belong to anyone else. They belong only to me. Mama Yeva Amsho Jeeva Loke. Jeeva Bhuta Sanatana, he says. But now they have become Jeeva Bhuta instead of Brahma Bhuta. Brahma Bhuta means you are spiritual completely. Jeeva Bhuta means the spiritual soul is trapped in a material body. It's called Jeeva Bhuta. And because of that, Manashashtani Indriyani, Prakritistani Karshati, he says that they are struggling with their one mind and the five senses in this world to enjoy and exploit the matter and the things of this world. Uh, and uh, why am I struggling? Because he says, Nadat Bhasayate Suryo Nashashanko Napavakaha Yadgat Vanani Vartante Tadhama Paramam Mama. That is 15.6. This is 15.7. That is 15.6. He says that there is a spiritual world which belongs to me. Tadhama Paramam Mama. He says, my spiritual world. And all the living beings belong to that place. But that place is a very beautiful place because it has uh, no uh, need for sun or moon or electricity there. And all living beings live very happily there. And uh, leaving that place, the soul has come in this world on a long journey. And he's suffering in this world with his mind and senses, he says. So, in this way, in Bhagavad Gita, in the 15th chapter, is a very important chapter called Purushottam Yoga. Krishna gives valuable piece of information about who are we and where do we have to go back. Urdhamulam adhashakham ashvattam prahuravyayam chandamsi yasya parnani yastam veda saveda vid. He is telling there is a, a large banyan tree which is upside down tree. And uh, all the living beings in this world are existing in that upside down tree. He says, why he is calling it as a Urdu Mula Madhaka Shakam? Roots upward, branches down. Because that kind of upside down tree you can only see in the water uh, reflection. Mm-hmm. You know, the original tree is in the bank of a river, but the upside down tree is in the water. Mm-hmm. If there is a mango tree in the bank of a river, you, you can eat that mango. But if it is reflected in the water, you can't eat that mango. Mm-hmm. So he is saying the material world is like the upside down tree. And one has to take the spiritual knowledge weapon. Asanga Shastrena Dridhena Chitva. One should cut the upside down tree and go to the original tree where one can be truly happy. In this way, in the 15th chapter, Krishna gives information about who we are and where have we come from and where we have got to go back. He teaches this in the, in the Gita. And all other information in the Gita is centered around this. Because then there is an explanation about how this material world is says, Mahamupetya Punarjan Madukhalaya Mashashvatam Napnubanti Mahatmanaha Samsiddhim Paramam Gataha. Arjun, those people who become my devotees, they return back to me safely and they will live with me eternally. And those who are not becoming my devotees, he says they repeatedly take birth in this Aprapya Maam Nivartante Murti Samsara Vartmani. They repeatedly take birth in this world. And every time they come here, they chase after material pleasures. Then in the Gita, Lord Krishna tells about the nature of material pleasures. He says that just like you see when you have a soap water, you take a tube and you blow it. It produces bubbles. You have seen that? Sometimes small bubbles, sometimes big bubbles. Sometimes bubble as big as a football. And they are very colorful also. Multiple colors. They look very charming. They are very enchanting. But after flying a little distance, they burst open. Similarly, in this world, the things go from small to big and they are very charming and then they, they blast after that. In the same manner, he says, whether it is 
our relationships, what happened to our great grandfather, our grandfather, our grandmother. One by one, everybody has to, their bodies burst like a bubble in this world. They don't live forever in this world, although they may be very near and dear to us. Not only the people, even the things like the commodities we acquire, whether it is the bank balance, whether it is a big bungalow, whatever it is. So Krishna says the temporary commodities of this world should not be our central attraction because they are Ashashwatam and this world is Dukhalayam. Two words he says. Because they are temporary, not going to remain with me forever. Let me not make them my goal, he says. Or not that you don't use a bungalow or a car, you use them. But you know that these things will leave me. That is not my main goal. And then he's saying, why is it uh, Dukhalayam? He says that in this world, everything gradually changes. Ultimately, it's led to destruction. You can see childhood to boyhood to youth to old age and then destruction of the body. So everybody's body undergoes the same situation in this world. It changes and perishes. And it is also a mixture of Sukha Dukha, he says. It comes as a combination of pleasure and pain. You go to your school, you know, you get good marks, you are very happy, you get fail marks, you cry. You go to your job, you get promotion, you are happy, you are laid off from the job, you cry. And you enter, enter marital relationship, you know, you are happy for a while and then you fight, quarrel and you suffer. So the material world is made in such a way that it always gives fire and smoke together. One cannot be happy forever. So these are all reasons why we should quit this world and go back to that world, like Krishna says. Because in this world, there is dualities. It's also changeable and perishable. And one will never be satisfied with any object in this world because there are always better objects in this world. There is a better mobile with better facilities, better car with better looks, better post and position with better pay and perks. So in this way, the jiva in this world is always hankering for better and better prospects. So he is hankering because of the relativity of this world. On the contrary, Krishna says, if you come to my abode, Krishna never changes, Krishna never perishes. Uh, in the spiritual world has no sukha dukkha, only sukha is there. In the spiritual world is the place of everlasting bliss. And uh, it also is not relative because once you attain Krishna, there is no one more beautiful than him. There is no one more wealthy than him. There is no one more uh, renounced than him in all respects. So in this way, one has to understand the most basic truth which is emphasized in the Gita. This is Dukhalayam, whereas that is a world of uh, Paramananda. This is Ashashwatam, that world is Shashwatam. This world is shadow, that world is the real substance. This world is like the up upside down tree and that world is the original tree. Here you get an imitation fruit which is reflected in the water that cannot give you happiness. There you get the original fruit which can satisfy the longings of the soul. And then why, why should we do this? Because you are the part and parcel of Krishna. And Krishna is the whole, you are the part. So the natural activity of the part is to serve the whole like a finger. If three fingers combine together, you can put a signature. If one finger is wounded, then you can't put signature properly. In this way, when jivas don't come together and cooperate because of the diseased mentality of enjoying separately. But when they come together and serve, it becomes very beautiful. So that's why Prabhupada started this movement where jivas come together, sing together, dance together, uh, hear the message of the Lord together, offer bhoga to Lord and everything. So in this way, amongst all the activities we do, most important activity is the chanting of the Holy Name. Because chanting forms the basis for all other activity. If you are eating prasad, you should not eat the food without chanting the Holy Name. If you are worshipping the deity or decorating the deity, while decorating also one should chant the mula mantras and only then we offer the aratis and all, huh? like that. So, Bhagavatam we recite, initially we sing the kirtan of the Holy Name, then we recite the Bhagavatam. Huh? So, we don't do any activity without the Holy, devoid of the Holy Name. Huh? Holy Name is the foundational thing. And also Holy Name purifies us and gives us a spiritual platform to experience all other activities, huh? spiritual activities. So, uh, the 15th uh, chapter, I was telling you just now about the verses uh, 6 and 7. You go through the purport proper, it's very beautifully. So, by remembering our identity, our sense of belonging, our current status in this material world, and our bright future prospects that await us in the spiritual world, 
and the means for attaining that is two. One is get the sword of knowledge to cut the upside down tree, which is Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam, and get the medicine of the holy name to cure the malady of the soul, which is the bhoga vritti or enjoying mentality. So you already have these two things with us. We have the holy name, we have the holy fame. So holy fame is the sword and holy name is the medicine. Accept these two things and we get purified. And in this very life, we can go back home, back to Godhead. So every devotee should keep this in the forefront in one's life. This material world is a foreign place. I have to go back home, back to Godhead. That's my original home. I will live with the Lord eternally. I will see him. I will serve him. I will love him. And this is my eternal desire. So if you keep this in the focus in your life, you will never be diverted or distracted by Maya appearing in varieties of forms in this world. And you will be fixed in Lord as sweet of Krishna always. Arinam Prabhu ki.